Think not, the Lord came, for peace on earth. He came, give us a sword. Shalom in the name of the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Time of Night Watchmen. Time of Night Watch Time. Commentary information, bio projects, stuff. Woo! I want to thank my sister who uh, impressed upon me to, to look into this. I mean, not that I didn't know, but share what I know. And uh, you might not get the result you're looking for or maybe more than you asked for. But uh, that's what makes this all interesting for being the Time of Night Watchmen, especially in the best areas of information. So the key question is, what does it mean? And look into the name of Jesus. Yes. So many have people fighting over this. We'll get into that as well, too. But uh, we're going we're gonna to change it up a little bit because, like I said, my studies in the ancient Hebrew has been quite extensive for the most part, interesting at, at, at most, and uh, fun because uh, it's quite eye-opening. Uh, so we'll do that as well, too. So, but... Again, when we lift off the veil of modern Hebrew, which is totally debauched, then we look into the word or words in ancient Hebrew, totally different perspective. And we'll be adjusting that as well, too. But remember, we're dealing in an area known as linguistics. Yeah. Plural and form, but singular in construction, the study of human speech, including the units, nature, structure, and modification of language. Pragmatics, semantics, syntax, morphology, phonology, phonetics, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, uh, yeah, so I just want you to be ready for a rabbit trail. <laughs> there's going to be a bunch of those. So just keep that in mind. Keep it in prayer as well, too. There's, there's a lot to consume in this area because uh, there seems to be a level of uh, churchianity types out there who are just, just common sense went out the window. So there is a difference between ancient Hebrew and modern Hebrew. Big difference. Uh, so much so that we're going to delve into that, even to the, the extent and length in which how much modern Hebrew is basically just a, a, per, a perversion of ancient Hebrew. I mean, just like, what? What is this nonsense? It just scribbles. But anyway, uh, most of the information I required, thanks to this one fellow named Jeff Benner, you can look him up on the internet. Uh, his objective was uncovering the language, culture, and philosophy of the Bible, learn to read the Bible through the eyes and minds of those who lived through it, wrote about it from the ancient Hebrew perspective, uh, pictures as well as letters. That's that's basically ancient Hebrew. It's pictures as well as letters. So a lot, a lot to glean off of this man's uh, research. Uh, of course, I did my own praying. Like I said, I help from upstairs. But, uh, you know, when you look at modern Hebrew, this is kind of what it looks like. On the left, and how we basically pronounce it on the right, and we commonly refer to as Yah Yahweh, <laughs> Yahweh, um, and uh, yes, that's Hebrew on the left, and we re read right to left in Hebrew. I should know. I was broke Jewish. Anyway, so but again, I don't want you to get stuck. See, people get stuck when it comes to language, especially this language. Uh, you see it on top of this over here, uh, which is the ancient Hebrew kind of, and uh, and what it means. Interesting enough, and of course, there's the modern Hebrew on the bottom of that. Doesn't look anything one from the other. That's why I tend to go away from modern Hebrew and go to ancient Hebrew, because there's more of a story there. So don't get stuck, and uh, be objective. And again, it's a matter of one's perspective. That's what's interesting about God and his word. It's about a person's perspective. Uh, it's forever changing in the idea that everything points to God, but, you know, if we don't put God in a box, you get to see and understand different perspectives. And that being, of course, some of the spirits, the spirit of God was the spirit of understanding. So wisdom and understanding, it all coincides together and it changes our perspective as we grow and mature in our faith. So that in mind, let's think about the fluidity of God and his word. In Jeremiah 13, 17, 13, says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Remember that, fountain of living waters. It's liquid. Uh, people, you know, can you contain, can you contain water in a box? Sure you can, but is God containable? It's a matter of perspective. Of course, you got these sacred namers out there who are extremely dogmatic about how you pronounce and say the word of Jesus, which isn't Jesus, it's Jesus or whatever, or is whatever. Anyway, I mean, anyway, this this is my question to those folks who are supposedly born again and are into the whole dogmatic of the sacred namers. We go to Genesis 11, 9. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound 
Hmm. The language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Yeah. That's Babel. Remember that? Genesis 11, 9. Babel. Huh. That's interesting. So we all don't speak the same language. Hmm. Of course, in Acts 2, 1 through 4, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Other tongues. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so looking at the modern Hebrew first, yod heh vav heh this is the meaning in the ancient Hebrew, the Yad, okay? Uh, we'll break this down as well, again, from Jeff Brenner's uh, arm and closed hand. Hmm. Or someone could say a, a, a strong arm and closed hand. Okay? Means work, throw, make, praise. That's a picture, Okay? Unlike the modern Hebrew, that's a picture. You can almost identify that picture as being an arm and a hand. Kind of like a stick finger, you know? Sticky people? Stick people? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, meanings work through, make, and praise. Interesting. Sound is like that of a Y. Or e. History of Reconstruction, according to Jeff, is the early Semitic pictograph of this letter is an arm and hand. The meaning of this letter is work, make, and throw. The functions of the hand, the modern Hebrew name Yod is a de derivative of the two-letter word Yad, a Hebrew word meaning hand, the original name for the letter. Someone changed the meanings. So see what I'm saying here? It's a picture. It's an arm. It's a strong arm with a hand. What does a strong arm and hand do? You know, interesting enough, I actually did a demonstration on this very word that someone was sitting in a chair and I helped lift them up out of their chair. With my strong arm and hand. Isn't that interesting? That's the yod. Mm -hmm. Of course, again, picture Griff again. This is the hey, hey, man with arms raised. Look, reveal, breath. Mm. Okay, the original pictograph of this letter is a man standing with his arms raised up. The modern Hebrew, the original name for this letter is hey. A Hebrew word means behold, as when looking at a great sight. This word can also mean breath, hmm, or sigh, as one does when looking at a great sight. The meaning of the letter is behold, look, breath, sigh, reveal, and revelation from the idea of revealing a great sight by pointing it out. Yeah, there's a picture. All right, maybe you see something different that I don't see, or maybe you see something different than what this uh, researcher has, has found. It's a matter of perspective. This is the hey. Following letter in the in the ancient Hebrew for the word of Yahweh is vav. Some say vav. Uh, add, secure, hook. A pictograph of a peg. Hmm. W o o u. The modern Hebrew name of this letter is vav, a word meaning peg or hook. This letter is used as a consonant with a vav sound as a vowel with a o and a u sound. The cons the con yeah. The consonant and vowel pronunciations of each of the consonant vowel letters of the ancient Hebrew language, which include the Aleph, He, Vav, and Yud, were closely related. For instance, the letter He is H or E, and the pronunciation letter is Yud is Y or E. Following this pattern, it is probable, probable that the original pronunciation of the letter was W, as the vowel sounds associated with the letter as O and U. In addition to the modern or Arabic language, this letter is pronounced with a W. Therefore, the original name of this letter would have been W-A-W -W instead of V-A-V, -V, as it was the modern Hebrew. As the picture indicates, this letter represents a peg or hook, which is used to secure something. The meaning of this letter is to add or secure. Uh, I see something that holds somebody up who's, who's missing, who needs help up. Again. Something is holding something up or someone. Again, a letter within the confines of the word Yahweh. And we'll get into that name as well, too. <clears throat> again, back to the hay again. We know this one, right? Look, reveal, breath. Uh, you know, so there's something very important about this entire depiction of the very, what they would call a sacred name of God. The great I am. 
we'll get to that here soon. And of course, finally, we'll see, I am that I am, it says in Exodus 13, 14. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Huh. See the picture? The meaning behind the very pictures says a lot about the character of God himself. Huh? Right? Yeah. Then this is an interesting thing recently. It has been said that the Jewish sages associated the covenant name of God, Yahweh, with breath. The idea is that the name itself, when pronounced, is the sound of breathing. The two syllables in the name correspond to the intake and outtake of a single breath. In this way, the theory goes, our breaths evoke the name of God. A naturally voiced inhalation sounds like Yah, and a voice exhalation sounds like Weh. Thus, the very breath we take, we are speaking God's name. He breathed into us the breath of life, just 2 7, and we still retain that breath. So, so imagine, if you will, here's Genesis 2 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Do you realize what this means? Text. Do you, do you realize what this means? If it's true that Yahweh is not, as we say, Yahweh, it's more like a breath. That means the entire dialect of the language that we supposedly know of today is incorrect. We might as well be studying and reading J.R. Tolkien's linguistics in the areas of Elvin, <laughs> who, by the way, was a linguistic who helped make the Jerusalem Bible. Go figure that. So, again, we, we, we're, we could be so far off language-wise in phonetics and everything else when it comes to modern Hebrew compared to ancient Hebrew that it's like night and day. Totally different. Like I said, we might as well be studying uh, Elvin at this point. Just food for thought. Jesus' name. You got to understand, language in Jesus' time was both Greek and Aramaic, for what we understand so far. Could be wrong. There might be more to it. And I'm sure there is, because if they were given time to speak many different languages, chances are there are many different languages in the time. Obviously, I mean, that's deductive reasoning. So do I have a problem with the name of Jesus? No, I'm not refuting the name at all because even as I've been in deliverance ministry, I have done exorcisms, and guess whose name I invoked? Jesus. Rebuke the devil, he shall flee. Yeah, so I invoked the name of Jesus, and guess what? And the, the, the demons left. Unless there's some uh, satanic conspiracy. <laughs> I mean, you know, who knows? Uh, but why would they run away from the name of Jesus? Screeching and crying and everything else in between. I, I mean, I, again, you know, it's like, all right, we, we can play that game just like the earth is flat. There's a conspiracy for you. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not a flat earther. Anyway, so, and then, of course, there's the Emmanuel. It's spelled an I usually, originally, but we'll go with the E. Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, why wasn't he called Emmanuel? Here's another one. It's like, hmm, what is it? This means God is with us. Mind you, there's plenty of historical data to conclude it is Jesus. You want to go Yeshua? We'll go there. We'll go there very shortly. But even in the writings of Josephus talks about such a thing as Jesus. And he's a Jewish secular historian back in that time, back in that age. Quite a read, by the way. It's not one of these things you can do read overnight. It's quite a read. Then, of course, when it comes to things like learning or trying to figure out what the name is, you got to consider dialect. It's This is more theoretical thinking than actual hands-on in your face. I mean, look at the American English dialects. In the Western, it's, I mean, you got in Southern, in southern, Amer southern United States, you have y'all. <laughs> and we have Western United States, dude. <laughs> I mean, really. We got different dialects within the confines of our own country. And Jerusalem was, was the honeypot place to be and go for, for people from all over the world. You can't imagine what different dialects there are there at that time, even modern times. 
Interesting enough, when Joshua 1 says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying. Why do I mention Joshua? Because, again, we're going to go through down another rabbit trail, because the name Joshua in the Hebrew is as close as you're going to get to the name of Jesus. And of course, we'll fight over that as well, too, because we're bored, right? People are bored. Let's fight over that name. So I use, of course, the, the E sword. Uh, as well as a strong concordance to help to uh, I don't know, simplify this as possible. Of course, all my own research as well too with the ancient Hebrews, a lot it, a lot of things change, and that's 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 a study in and of itself. I already touched upon it. I'll touch upon it again before we conclude. But uh, let's let's break it down, right? Okay. Joshua, oh Yahshua, Yahushua. Now it says here this is the the uh, content and context of the breakdown of the name Yahshua. Those numbers there represent the very meanings of this word. Uh, the Jewish leader, Yahshua, or Yahshua, or Joshua, as compared to other uh, words and letters in comparison, so we're going to break this one word, this name Yahshua, down to its parts. You ready? Like I said, this is the closest we're going to get to the name of Jesus. However people change it phonetically or scriptically or whatever, you know, it's like I've never had to use that name, Yahshua, for rebuking the devil. It always came out pretty easy with Jesus and worked out pretty pretty well. Uh, I don't know about you. If you haven't done deliverance ministries, then I don't know why you're arguing about the word and name of Jesus. Anyway, so we're going to break this down using all the numbers there that, that reference the very things that break this name down, Yahshua. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Which is Jehovah. Whoa. Is a self-existent or eternal Jehovah, Jewish national name of God, Jehovah the Lord, compared to other words and meanings. So, wow, that's that's a big... Mm -hmm. Jehovah, so God. So God is in the name of Yahshua. Then there is Yahshua, or Yahshua, a primitive loop properly to be open, wide, or free, that is, by implication, to be safe, causatively to free or succor, uh, at all avenging, de defend, deliver, or deliverer, hello, help, preserve, rescue, be safe, bring, having salvation, save or savior, get victory. Again, this is just within the confines of the name Yahshua. Hmm. You see, if you want to go Hebrew, <clears throat> then, of course, is Hoshea, again, Deliverer. Hoshea, the name of the five Israelites, Hosea, Hoshea, and Hoshea. Deliverer. Interesting. So all in the name of Yahshua is this meaning of this name. Wow, right? Kind of cool. I would have broken down the ancient Hebrew, but we'd be here all day, and that's a study in itself, and, and I, I don't have that time. Then, of course, there's <clears throat> the simple one, Yeshua, hmm, which is the common... Uh, influx most people use these days, especially in the Hebrew roots community. Uh, he will save Yeshua, the name of two Israelites, also of a place in Palestine. Yeshua, or in the English, is Jeshua. Kind of blown away yet? Oh, that's all right. We still have more rabbit trails. Yeah. The kicker is, you know, this is all about the turning of the king and kings and lord of lords. Oh, wait, wait, that, that, that's not the right image. That, that shouldn't be there. Turn again. <laughs> All right, I don't put that in there. But anyway. All right, Revelation 19, 12. This is this is the kicker. I love this part. All right, people are arguing about Jesus' actual name, but here it says, "His eyes were as a flame of fire." It's Revelation 19, 12. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew <laughs> but he himself. So unless you've died, gone to heaven, or vice versa, and have come down to you and had a conversation, and Jesus Christ himself, Yeshua HaMashiach, is giving you his new name, it says that no man knew. So that's a future tense thing, and that means you don't know. <laughs> so we're arguing and debating that it's not actually Jesus is something different. <laughs> You have to do Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic back at the time. You know, whatever. <sighs> yeah. 
So what's this all about? Let's go. Let's bring. Let's be honest with each other. Let's go to Psalm two one. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Yeah, that's a good one. How about Proverbs twelve eleven? He that telleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. <laughs> First Corinthians fifteen two says, "By which also ye are saved." If you keep in memory that I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Yeah. And one of my favorites in 2 Timothy 3, 7 says, Always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I mean, this we're talking linguistics here. I mean, why are we arguing about this? I mean, seriously. Plus, God or an angel has come down and says, no, it's not Jesus. If you've been in the deliverance ministry and used something other than Jesus, let me know how that works out. I'm curious. You want Yeshua, Yahshua? I'm curious. You know, you might be onto something. Who knows? But uh, when I was delivering this ministry, Jesus Christ, yeah, that, that works really good. Mm -hmm. So in Jesus' name, Philippians 2 9, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Every name. I guess we could argue the uh, all the linguistic arguments with the content, context, meaning, the text, pretext, and everything else in between. But uh, as for me, I, again, Jesus works. Jesus Christ works in my life. Jesus Christ works in other people's life as well, too. You rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus, he shall flee. And he does. Or, you know, we could just go back to this again. This is my best guess. You want to know he, Jesus' name? There it is, right there. There it is. What we thought and supposedly known for hundreds of years, Yahweh. Yeah, there it is. As simple as a breath. This is who Jesus is. Says everything about his character, his personality, and what he came to do and has done for millennia. You decide. Because this is Tyler Night Watch. We're Tyler Night Watch. Tyler, commentary information, Bible process stuff. See ya. Don't want to be ya. And remember, there's only one way, one truth, and one life. In Jesus' name, amen.